All right, here's a video on how to find the domain and range of functions. In this video, I'm basically just going to look at how to find the domain and range uh, while looking at a graph. I'll talk briefly about how to do it algebraically in this video, but I will probably save that for a different video. Uh, on your screen right now, we have six graphs that our job is to find the domain and range of and as we look at domain and range domain we want to start thinking about all of the all of the x values that are in the graph and the range is the set of all y values the range is the output while the domain is the input so x values as you know go from left to right so as I do this I, uh, I scan I scan my eyes from left to right and I see where as I scan from left to right I see where the where the graph sort of picks up now for this one we're gonna assume that it goes on forever down here I'm gonna put an arrow down here so the first point the x value where my eyes sort of pick up the graph is right here is right here at that point but the arrow should suggest that it goes on forever bottom uh, goes on forever to the left and down so our domain theoretically goes on forever this way so the way that we write that is we say that it's negative infinity comma and then we follow the graph to the right as we scan from left to right we follow the graph up up this way and we come to this point right here at that point x is negative one <clears throat> that particular piece of the graph stops <coughs> and it picks up right up here and you notice that this is actually not even a function because there are two y values when x is negative one but that's okay. We can still find domain and range of relations. So the uh, what I'm trying to say here, I guess, is that the domain doesn't break. The range breaks, but the domain doesn't. In other words, when x is negative one, this particular part of the graph stops, but it jumps up and continues up here, and it goes on forever to the right. So the domain of this one happens to be negative infinity to positive infinity and when we write infinity we always leave the open brackets and just the parentheses I should say now for the range again we're gonna assume that this goes goes on forever in the in this direction down and to the left this is a linear function linear piecewise uh, so we're so we're looking at a range now the range is is a scan that we need to do that basically looks at all of the potential or all of the y values that are in this graph so the range uh, starts way down below where we can even see it at negative infinity and it goes up to it goes up this way and it stops right at this level the range is an up and down sort of investigation so it stops right there at one it's a closed circle which means we're going to use a bracket rather than a parenthesis. And then you can see that there's a huge gap here in between the two pieces of this relation. So we need to sort of like come up with a way to, to talk about that. And I'm just going to use a quick union, which means and. And it picks up again where y is 4. So at this level, y is 4. And that's a constant function. So I'm just going to simply kind of write it like that. There might be a better way to write that, but what this means is that the relation, all the y values go uh, negative infinity to positive 1, inclusive, so we close the bracket, and it includes 4 as well. But it doesn't include anything in between 1 and 4. As you can see, the graph sort of, there's a break there. So let's get some more practice here. The domain of this one, again, is a is an inspection of left to right, and you can see that 
it goes from negative infinity all the way over here and it goes all the way in this direction too so there's no break in the domain the range however there are only two values the range has y equals 1 and y equals 3 so y equals 1 and 3 and again there's probably a different way of writing that but uh, I'm, I'm afraid to write it like this that would imply that it's open from 1 to 3 so I'll just write it like that uh, you might also sometimes see instead of y you might see uh, f is an L, uh, I guess f is equal to 1 and 3 but anyway I'm getting off track here the only two y values in the range are 1 and 3 over here for the domain and range number 3 you can see the domain is left and right so what I sometimes do is I, I like I said I scan vertically I might put my pencil down and I just go from left to right and I move my pencil from left to right and I try to I try to see where my pencil sort of picks up the graph and you can see the arrows lead me to believe that the domain is infinite as well now you're probably at this point thinking are all the domains infinite for every single function and the answer is no which we'll see in a moment uh, the range on this one again it's probably useful to scan this way maybe put your pencil down that way and sort of move it up and you'll see that the graph picks up your pencil right there at negative 2 looks like negative 2 and then all these y values are good the pencil's hitting there and then it stops right there at positive 3 so the range is closed from negative 2 to positive 3 and we'll use those brackets because the range does exist there okay so here we go let's continue number four we'll go a little bit faster here domain and range of number four the domain looks like it is forever in both directions even though we see an open circle here this is a function that picks up right above it so there's no break in the domain the range there are only two values in the range positive one and positive three over here domain this is definitely not a function because it does not pass remember the vertical line test it would fail but we can still talk about domain and range domain in this case starts right here and ends right here remember domain is a is an inspection from left to right so that would be negative four to zero looking at the x values and we close off both of those because there are closed circles on both ends the range is closed from zero all the way up to positive four over here we just have simple points so I'm going to list this like this, all the potential x values. So this one here is negative 2 comma 2. This one is 0 comma 1. This one is 2 comma negative 1. And this one is 3 comma 3. So the range is, excuse me, the domain is all of the x values in those points. And, and there's different notation, I guess, but I'm just going to write them like this. This is a collection of those four x values. The range is all the y values starting with the lowest one and going, ending up with the highest one. Number seven, domain and range. Domain and range is from left to right. Again, let's assume we have arrows on both of these linear sections. Domain is unbroken the range is kind of strange as well it if we're looking at the range as an inspection left and right and we were to sort of slide our I, I guess I can't highlight that but if we were to slide a pencil if we were to lay our pencil this way and sort of slide it up we would see that it goes from negative infinity at this point right here it I see an open circle but there's also a point over here that is closed so that that range is unbroken 
and it goes all the way up to positive 4, which is where it stops. So negative infinity to positive 4 inclusive. Domain and range of this quadratic is, let's see, domain for these things goes on forever, left and right. The range goes, looks like from 0 to positive infinity. 0 is the lowest value, that is a minimum value right there. Right here, this is a, it looks to me like it's something like this, along these lines. Not a function, but we can talk about the domain as being 0 to infinity and the range as being everything. Again, we assume that this goes on forever. All right, so I think I'll end part one there. I have more examples at the bottom of this presentation that I'm going to get to in part two, but I think that was a pretty good start to our discussion on domain and range. And in part two, we're going to uh, do similar stuff, but I'm going to really focus more on what the actual function rules are in addition to the graphs. So I hope this helped, and uh, I'll see you in part two.